So, Carbon Rider Gates, episode 35. This episode was quite the interesting one, as the tonal shift for this episode was very different from what we've been getting in the past couple of episodes, where this episode, it was more of a Sarah and Neon sort of heavy-focused episode, as they were the main focus in the episode as they were hunting for the ID course in the game, and all the rest of the other players were just there for the sake of being there, doing their own things and working towards their own goals. But not only that, it also had Kawa sort of being silly and comedical, which was different from what we saw him as last week, because last week he said he's going to put an end to this and destroy the goddess because he doesn't like the goddess. And in this episode, he's just been an overall goofball trying to look out for his sister by pretending to be like a giant Tanuki statue. He's camouflaging and stuff like that. It was very weird to see him in this comedic light from what we've been seeing in the past couple of episodes in this episode but overall the jokes did get a laugh out of me but this episode also saw the elimination of Daichi and I gotta say he's gone before he even began well he stuck around for a little bit in the uh sort of the Jamato games and stuff like that but now he's gone for good and will never see or hear from him ever again he is out of here. And I'm surprised it took him this long to get rid of him. But for Buffer to be the one that put him down, I couldn't be any more happier. Because Buffer was brutal to Daichi in this fight. But not only that, Daichi finally got his comeuffance because he tried taking advantage of Sarah and Neon by trying to outsmart them. And him trying to outsmart them was his undoing in the end where Buffer was able to wipe the floor with him. Now, in this episode, we also saw the return of the Gardener Jamato, and he's facing off against Buffer, and it looks like from next week's episode preview that Jamato is going to be a bit of a threat. But not only that, we also saw the return of none other than fan favorite Punk Jack. That's right, Punk Jack is back. Now, I had heard that Punk Jack is getting his own one shot that's airing next week from the research I did before recording this video, so I didn't think he'd be back so soon. I just thought the one shot would be him sort of having an origin story from what I was, from what I've been told what it's about. Now, how he was revived? He was revived by Seiru, the brand new game master who's doing the Desire Rael, but not only that, Nerium was revived as well. So Nerium and Punk Jack is back in the game. And I love Punk Jack's remark where he says, well, looks like this whole thing's gone downhill since I left, which got a laugh out of me, but I was still in shock at seeing him back because I wasn't expecting him back. I mean, that was a big surprise for me. I guess playing the new Zelda game all weekend kept me off Twitter to avoid spoilers. But yeah, Punk Jack is back, and I'm wondering what Origins will learn about him in that special we'll be getting next week but this episode like I said it was a very comedic focused like not comedic focused episode it was a very sort of laid back episode until Daichi got stomped near the end of the episode and got the ass beating by Buffer which was cool to see because Daichi is the character that I love to hate he's such an asshole he's such a heel of how he manipulates people and he does outright say saying oh I just manipulate people so I can get what I want in the game and move forward with my own goals so I'm sorry if I do that to you it's just the way I am yeah I'm glad he got his ass stomped in this game finally finally glad it was gonna happen to him I thought he'd get like eliminated like the old-fashioned way but now Ah, Buffer took him out, which was great to see. Now, it looks like Nirim is actually moving forward with his plan that he wanted to do a couple of episodes ago before his death, and that is moving the Desire Grand Prix to another world, and it looks like that plan was already set in motion at the start of the episode, where Jin said, like, before the opening, he says, looks like my time here will be short. And when he said that, I thought that he was actually going to die in this episode, like he was going to make some big sacrifice. Now, that can still happen with Jin, because Jin is the biggest Ace fanboy, and he's probably going to sacrifice himself to protect Ace's life. Now, seeing that Neram wants to move the game to another world... That makes sense as well, because that's something that he wanted to do for a while. Like, if shit got out of hand, shit got too crazy, pack up and leave, host the game in some other timeline or some other world where they can sort of hit that big reset button with no other consequences. So, it looks like he wants to go forward with that plan again. But not only that, the mystery of Seiru has been a discussion in the community with people trying to figure out who he is. I've heard speculations that it could be Ace from another timeline, because this whole game always goes into a loop. There's speculation 
speculation that it could be someone else, like high above the hierarchy, or it could be someone we've never met until now. So this character's like whole presence is a big mystery, and for their reason to revive Nerum and Punk Jack raises a lot of questions with why they did it if Nerum is just planning on moving the Desire Grand Prix to another world where he wants to pack up and leave. So why do that if they're just going to bail on you in the end unless he knew they would do that in the end? So Carmen Rider Geats episode 35, it was an alright episode. I wouldn't call it a 10 out of 10. I mean, if we didn't get that stuff with Daichi or Nerum and Punk Jack coming back, then this episode for me would have been pretty boring and pretty subpar and average. And I probably would have struggled to review it if it was just like silly, goofy stuff. I'm not saying that silly, goofy stuff in the episode we got was bad. There was some nice, wholesome moments in here like k and Sarah bonding when he snuck up on her at night and scared her, that got a chuckle out of me. Also, K were pretending to be the Tanuki sponsor and doing the high-pitched voice and he's hiding behind the couch. And that was just silly, wacky, goofy fun as well. But <laughs> I did enjoy that. Like, it's weird to see K will go through this whole personality shift in this episode, but I can understand why he's doing it. He wants to protect his sister because she's prone to this game. But... If we didn't get like the stuff near the end, like I said, this episode would have been probably pretty boring. But what do you guys think of Carmen Rady Geats episode 35? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Tell me in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. With that said, I'm out of here. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out, take care. Bye.